हेलो गाइस दिस इज राकेश तलरेजा एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द सेशन ऑफ कॉफी विथ कॉन्सेप्ट यस गाइस दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑन द कॉफी विथ कॉन्सेप्ट एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द एक्सपेरिमेंटल लॉ ऑफ कुलूम्स यस द वेरी फेमस कुलूम्स लॉ व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर गेट एग्जामिनेशन व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इसरो ईएससी प्रीलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चंस कैन बी एक्सपेक्टेड एंड आल्सो अदर देन दैट इट इज अ फाउंडेशन टॉपिक ऑफ स्टडीइंग द स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इट इज यूजफुल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड्स द रूल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड्स सो व्हाट इज दिस एक्सपेरिमेंटल कुलूम्स लॉ हाउ हिस्टोरिकली इट वाज डेवलप्ड हाउ इट कैन बी अप्लाइड टू द न्यूमेरिकल्स ओके व्हाट इज द कांसेप्ट ऑफ लाइक like charges everything let us have look with some demonstrations as well let's get started again with a cup of coffee the foundation of the course of electromagnetic starts from the study of static electricity yes guys electricity seen everywhere be it x ray machines be it computers or any other gadgets the trains runs because of electricity and not only trains the flights the cars everything runs because of electricity you are able to measure the ecg of the heart because of electricity you are able to watch videos on lcd displays because of electricity the term electricity got its name from the greek word for amber yes if we go back to 600 bc the greek people at that time used to have their amber jewelry and in their leisure time the free time they'll be rubbing their amber piece with the cotton sleeves and they'll find that that amber piece attracts small pieces of paper or straws at that time okay the people of the greeks people were more philosophical in nature they were not scientific in approach and they believed it as a magic as a fun okay they just called it as fun but is it only the piece of amber no now the very common example that you can easily find out at your home at i can find out at home is the common example of comb let's have a quick demo of it so as i'm mentioning you there can be several examples but you know something that you and me can easily find out at home is uh, at home is this definitely comb let me rub this comb you know through my hairs thoroughly so that it develops the charge due to friction and if i bring it closer to these paper see it has started attracting so here the comb was charged by rubbing against the hair and that is known as the process of charging by friction but what about the pieces of paper they were neutral they were in charge so why the attraction happened here the process is actually the process of induction yes guys later i will demonstrate that like charges repel each other unlike charges attract each other so here when you rub your comb against the hair the hair becomes positively charged and the comb becomes negatively charged and when you bring the comb closer to the pieces of paper there is a redistribution of electrons in the paper the electrons will be moving away towards the end part towards the far part of the paper and there will be a net positive charge towards the closer part of the paper and that positive charge will be attracted to the negative charge uh, on the comb right now it was somewhere in 1600 dr william gilbert first started experimenting okay similar things like you know the amber attracting the pieces of paper the comb attracting the balloon examples as you all know and eventually later on somewhere in 1785 there came the french army engineer charles augustin de coulomb the great man and he performed several 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 set of experiments and finally came up with the experimental coulomb's law All right, guys. Now let's say we have a point charge Q1 and another point charge Q2, and both of them are separated by a distance that is given as R. We are interested in finding what is the force of attraction or repulsion between them. So, guys, as per the Coulomb's experimental law, this force is proportional to the product of both the charges, that is Q1, Q2. The force is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two parts, uh, two charged particles. And in and all, we can say that the force is proportional to Q1, Q2 is divided by R. square now eventually replacing the proportionality sign with the constant of proportionality finally we can write down f is equal to k q1 q2 is divided by r square where when we figure out in the si units k turns out to be 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 with the units we can rectify force is in newton distance is meter q is in coulombs the name of unit itself was given to the name of coulomb and hence k will be measured as newton meter square per coulomb square which is also equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not where epsilon not is the quantity known as the electric permittivity of free space which is 8.8541 raised to the power minus 12 now eventually what is this force in the vector form now when because you are going to relate this concept to electric field ahead you are going to relate this concept that, uh, to the questions asked in gate so the final form of coulomb's law is important yes when we talk about in vector form what is the representation of the force so if we talk about the force that is exhibited by the charge 1 onto charge 2 we call it as f12 or on the other hand what is the force experienced by charge 1 due to the charge 2 that can be written as f 
to 1. Okay, so I'll give you the formulation of maybe any one of them. So if I want to describe F12, that is given by KQ1, Q2 upon R square. That is the magnitude already described. But the direction of this force is along the line, is along the unit vector from the charge 1 to the charge 2, which I call it as R12. What is R12? R12 is the unit vector from this point to another point. And I'm going to explain you through a numerical example as well. Just don't worry and just stay tuned again. Right. Now, guys, we are going to demonstrate also and we are going to learn that whenever there are two particles of same charges, that is plus Q1 plus Q2, they are going to repel each other. They are going to apply the force in the opposite direction. They repel each other. But if you have charges, okay, which are if you have charges which are similar, that, uh, which are opposite in sign, that is plus Q1 and the minus Q2. They are going to apply the force which is attractive, that is towards each other and eventually they attract each other. So when we rub this glass rod, basically with the piece of silk cloth, it loses electron and hence glass becomes positively charged, the silk becomes negatively charged. Now when this positively charged glass rod is brought closer to the balloon, it is going to attract the balloon. On the other hand, when we rub an ebonite rod, that is basically of rubber, with a fur, with a cat fur material, that ebonite rod is going to become negatively charged and hence when this negatively charged rod is brought to the negatively charged balloon, it is going to ripple the balloon as you are able to see because like charges ripple. Okay, so the previous videos demonstrations clearly illustrate that like charges repel each other and the unlike charges attract each other. Now, let me also present you a numerical question so that you also develop the problem solving capability from this particular concept, how the questions can be asked in the gate examination. And yes, later on, we are going to relate this concept to the very important concept of electric field. And don't worry, similar video, I shall be presenting you on the concept of electric field also demonstrating the laws and the rules of electric field. All right, guys. Now, finally, let's have a look into the question because numerical is going to be important for the gate examination. Now, the question says, find the Coulomb's force on the charge that is situated at the point P. Here, I'll also teach you what is superposition. Yes, as per the principle of superposition, it says that the net force acting on the charge at the point P is going to be the vector sum. Yes, the vector sum of the force of the forces that is applied by the charge at R and the charge at Q. Yes, guys. So now let us apply the superposition on this particular question. Let's start solving this. And to solve this first, I have joined the point P with respect to R, also with respect to the Q. And as I told you that the force is going to be along the unit vector line joining the two points. Okay. So before finding the unit vector, let us find the vector. Then we can divide the magnitude and find the unit vector. So vector from R to P. Now vector between two points is simply given by what formula? X2 minus X1 AX, Y2 minus Y1 AY, Z2 minus Z1 AZ. Right. So vector from R to P, 0 minus 0 AX x 0 minus 1 ay 1 minus 0 az everything is written in front of you and we get minus ay plus az the vector from q to p okay again 0 minus 0 0 minus minus 1 and 1 minus 0 eventually we get ay plus az now let us apply the coulomb's formula and get the net force and as per superposition again the net force will be the force from r to p the force from q to p and force is given by the formula k q1 q2 by r square r hat right okay Correct. So have a look into this. Okay. So when I have a look into this, it is K into plus Q plus 2Q because here it is plus Q plus 2Q. For other one, it is going to be minus Q and plus 2Q. The product of both the charges is eventually going to come. Okay. And divided by RP square, unit vector. Unit vector is vector divided by its magnitude. Similarly, next one will be K minus Q plus 2Q divided by QP square into the unit vector along the QP. Now we have calculated RP, we have calculated QP. So what is RP? What is the magnitude? Under root x square plus y square plus z square, that also we can apply. So putting down all the values, what is the final calculation you're going to have? Taking k, 2q square, com and all these things you can understand. Just have a look into the final answer. And even in the final answer, az to az is going to get cancelled. And finally, I'm getting minus root 2 kq square ay newtons. Okay, in gate, maybe they can give you the value of Q. They can give you the value of the charge. K is 9 into 10 power 9. You can substitute both and it can eventually become a numerical answer type question. Also, sometimes there are only conceptual questions in the gate. Like they can only ask without the numerical value. They can only ask the net force at the point P for the charge at the point P is in what direction? Clearly, the formula, the calculation is suggesting me that the net force should be in the minus y direction. But if the question is only asking direction, do I need to do the calculation? No, guys, very simply, you can understand. Now, let me actually make you explain you this. How you can understand this very simply. Just a moment. How you can understand this very simply. Okay, so let's talk about R to P, plus and plus. Okay, these are like charges. So, they will repel each other. So, the force will be in the given direction. Okay, now force due to the Q. 
this is minus q this is plus they are opposite sign okay so they are unlike charges they are going to attract okay so the charge at the point p will be pulled towards the charge at the q okay now when you, re you apply the resolution of uh, the vector both of these both of these forces will have the horizontal component that is in the what direction opposite to y direction minus y direction but what about the vertical component okay one of the force this force has the vertical component in the plus z and this particular second force has the vertical component in the minus z so plus z and minus z they eventually cancel each other okay because the magnitude of both these charges is the same plus q minus q but magnitude is same that is why eventually there is no z component only there is the y component that too in the negative y direction which is also suggested by the final formula guys so if you like this demonstration if you like this video so do mention in the comment box how you like the video so that we'll be motivated and we'll be really know knowing that students need such type of concepts this is a very small concept Coulomb's law okay directly you can expect its question in gate ESC ISRO examinations okay or indirectly it is very useful in the questions related with the electric field it is the foundation of studying the electric static electricity although it is a very basic physics concept also that you study in plus two but still it is very relevant and very useful for the gate preparation and similar such videos not only for electromagnetics we'll be bringing up for more subjects okay in in the demonstration form in the animated form but we only need your comments so that we come to know right whether you are enjoying it and yes if you are enjoying it we'll definitely increase up the frequency and try to bring up more such videos okay I hope you have had your cup of coffee fantastically with this particular session. Okay, keep enjoying and do not, if you're liking, if you're really enjoying, do not forget to subscribe the Baidu's Exam Prep YouTube channel and like the video if you have understood the concept. Thank you, stay safe, take care of yourself.